Welcome, welcome, welcome to this month's Deal Clinic Live. We have an exciting show for you this August. I cannot believe it's the eighth month of the year already. Okay, so welcome to August's uh, Deal, Deal Clinic Live. As I've said, this will be recorded and we'll be going out uh, with snippets to our social media channels on Instagram and Facebook. There'll also be shorts on our YouTube channel, Social uh, Sourcing Investments Limited. And the full recording will be there to rewatch in about a week's time. Now, I will drop the YouTube channel uh, link in the chat box later for you. Uh, so you can watch previous episodes as well. If you do have any questions, I welcome all our investors and agents alike. Please feel free to drop those into the chat box. I will keep my eye on that for you and we'll pose those questions to our panel today. There is no such thing as a silly question and I encourage you to ask that so that you understand actually what's here in front of you. If you are watching on the replay, please do feel free to email us with your questions at admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk. I will be dropping the links in for all our panelists today so you will be able to contact them directly as well. As well excuse me. So if you want to register to the platform, you would need to go to sourcinginvestments.co.uk um, and, and you'll be able to uh, register as an agent or an investor or even both. So without further ado, um, we have with us today, you, you may notice that we don't have our resident investor, Tim Sanders. So he is actually cycling across Europe. So we wish him um, an enjoyable holiday. We do have with us, though, Bruce Mannering, the director of Bond Finance Limited. OK. And as you know, you know Bruce very well. He and his team have nurtured great relationships for many years um, in the industry and ha actually have access to a lot of lending that other lenders don't have availability too. I will be putting Bruce's link into the chat box later as well. And I'm excited to announce that we have got our agents of the month, which is Calvin, Hugh, Peter Child and, jo and Jordan Birkenshaw are Property Investment Complete Northwest, also known as PICNW, which is much easier. I will be adding their link into the drop box, into the chat box, along with the links to the properties that they will be showing. So this month's deals are all about cash flow ready turnkey projects. OK, so we have a great HMO that we will be showing you and a block of multi units as well. So without further ado, I'm just going to do a quick intro with regards to PICNW. They have actually been with us for several years. They've been trading. Um, they started out as a letting agent 11 years ago. So and from that have organically grown the business. I won't say too much. I'll let the gentleman explain and give a little brief about where they have come from and how they are where and where they are going. And what I'm going to do now is play for you their video bio. We are Property Investment Complete Northwest Limited, an investment firm based in the north of England, covering the Yorkshire, Manchester, Greater Manchester and Merseyside regions. With a large amount of our clientele based overseas in Europe and Asia, we work with both first-time investors and investors with years of experience sourcing everything from smaller buy-to-lets to HMOs to large commercial to residential conversions. We have offices situated in Wakefield, Leeds, Sheffield, Manchester and Liverpool. Our team of professionals have in-depth knowledge in the local market to guide investors through their investment journey. Working alongside our sister companies, the group can offer sourcing, finance, construction, interior design, letting and insurance services all under one roof. We source in areas with high rental demand and as our letting services are in-house, the buildings we source are geared towards the rental in mind, so you as the investor are confident in the area and its potential for rental appeal. Whilst all our areas have strong equity growth and rental demand, our strongest area and one of the strongest within the UK lies within Manchester, 
Widely dubbed the London of the North, the city is seeing a vast rate of development with both UK and overseas investors alike attracted to the area with its very attractive returns and plans for growth in the future. In terms of yields for our projects, we work towards 7% net yields for our buy-to-lets and 9-10% yields for our HMOs. With this in mind, we've been able to establish a vast network of contacts to provide off-market opportunities for investors and source below-market investment opportunities. Okay, so as you saw from that, they are very much a one-stop shop with an all-in-house team. So I'm very excited to hand you over into the very capable hands of uh, PICNW. Gentlemen. Thank you, Bonnie, and uh, good to see everyone. Um, so like Bonnie mentioned, um, my name's Calvin. I'm the Group Board Director of PICNW. Um, I'm here with Peter Child who's the founder and director of the of the group. Uh, and to my left here, I've got Ron Birkinshaw, who's the acquisitions manager for PICNW. So we've got a short presentation just to uh, give you a bit of breakdown as to where we operate, how we how we work um, as a one-stop shop. Um, so Peter, if you can share, please. Okay, and everyone can see the screen. Yep, all good. Yep. Okay. So as we mentioned before, right now, um, myself and Jordan, we're sat in our head office in Wakefield. Uh, Peter's sat in sunny Cyprus at the moment, enjoying his holiday. Um, so um, we've got offices at the moment in Wakefield, Leeds, Sheffield, Manchester and Liverpool. Um, Peter's property investment experience of over 30 years. Um, we also have a, a wide team as well within the company who have a lot of experience with, within property investment. Um, over the years, we, as as we mentioned, we started as a letting company, and um, we primarily started as a letting company within the Yorkshire area. And as we've expanded over the years, we've gone into the likes of Manchester and Liverpool, um, and through working with investors, we've uh, eventually branched off into larger projects, HMOs, and commercial to residential conversions. Up to a point now, where at the moment our our development team are currently working on around uh, twenty five to thirty sites comprising of uh, buy to lets and HMOs and the larger projects. Um, we offer the one-stop shop service. So usually with investors, they will come to either myself or Jordan uh, within the sourcing side. We've got our, another team behind us as well within the sourcing team. We have an in-house architect and we'll go out and specifically find that project for the investor. So you come to us with a budget, we'll go out and find it and we'll help negotiate, negotiate the best deal, whether it's on market or off the market. If it needs finance, um, we also have an in-house finance team as well. Um, that's led by a, a lady called Demi. Um, anything from bridging, from mortgages, uh, refinances, she can assist with that side. And then our in-house development team, um, they, will, um, they, they cover um, all the areas that we mentioned before. Um, they're all on the books as well. So <clears throat> we have flexibility to make sure that the... Uh, Timelines are met, make sure the quality is there as well. We also have a wide range of subcontractors we call upon uh, who we've worked with for a number of years. And then predominantly for the HMOs and the commercial conversions, we have an interior design uh, um, department as well, and that's led by Chloe. So with Chloe's job is essentially to make it, um, make it stand out from the market, particularly with a market that's becoming more and more competitive. Chloe will research new designs, new color schemes, and uh, give investors 3D renderings and mood boards just to help them envisage their final projects. Um, and then the largest company and probably our core business is Letting. Uh, we currently manage around about 1,000 tenants at the moment and um, 200 landlords. Um, everything from the, as I said before, the buy to lets the HMOs and the apartments. Um, we have offices in um, all the areas we cover as well. And every area has a dedicated property manager uh, with a team behind them that will help assist um, the investors with their with the rental side. 
we do um, professional tenants, but we also work a lot with the corporate side as well. So we do a lot with the NHS. We do a lot with assisted living companies, um, but giving investors another opportunity to um, a different rental stream, if you like, something a bit more um, steady and something a bit more guaranteed for the investor, giving them um, peace of mind. And then the latest company we've set up is insurance. So we're looking to um, get that set up in the next couple of months and get that up and running. Um, we have most of the paperwork done um, and we will be offering uh, house insurance, uh, contents insurance, whatever you like for the investor. Um, and as the company grows, we are looking to bring more services in-house as well, uh, conveyancing being one of them. Next slide. Um, so the areas we serve, I think like most um, most investors, what they want is an area of high rental demand or increased equity growth. So that's a no-brainer. Um, so the areas we we operate, and predominantly why we've chosen to operate in these areas, such as Leeds, Manchester, and Wakefield, is because we've seen the rate of growth and the rate of investment that we've uh, that's happened over the past coming years. Um, Particularly um, in the past 20 years in, in, in Manchester and Leeds, these have been the fastest growths in the whole of the UK. Um, and we, we found it was a good strategy um, as a company and for investors' interests to move into these cities. Um, our core tenant profile is working professionals. Again, uh, one of the reasons why we've moved into these larger cities, they have areas which are very, um, very attractive to young professionals. So... I take Manchester as an example. A lot of large headquarters have moved up um, from London. The costs of uh, operations down in London become too expensive. These large headquarters have decided to move further north. Um, this coupled with the fact with the universities, they're, they're very attractive for both UK and overseas students. Um, they'll come over to these universities and once they've graduated, they need a job. So um, cities such as these have grown through this um, and they've diversified their, their their offerings to the local economy. So um, Manchester is, also, for example, is big in big in media and big in um, big in finance at the moment as well. So um, that's where that's the areas we looked at. Next. And for those who don't know, that's where we sit. Um, so if you like, it's the we call it the M62 corridor. So it goes from uh, west to east or east to west, whichever way. Um, and we we cover all the areas in between as well. So there's a lot of satellite towns um, surrounding Leeds, Manchester, Liverpool, Sheffield and Wakefield, which we also cover. Uh, and we also have plans to move further um, down south into the Midlands as well. We've spotted new opportunities there um, at the moment. So these are the targeted figures we look at. So I would say um, a lot of I'd say smaller capital investors would come to us looking for a buy to let. This is their typical criteria. So they want a two bedroom terraced house, um, something with maybe a little bit of refurbishment. Um, and those are indicative figures that we find uh, across our areas that we that we serve. So purchase price of roughly 80 to 110,000 uh, pounds with a rent of 700 to 800. And we will always target a net yield of 7%. So regardless of whatever area we're in, we'll always try and get 7% for the investor. Um, and it, it's similar to the HMOs as well. We'll always try and target 9 to 10%. Um, and the, the HMOs, again, the, the project costs, they'll vary from uh, area to area. But again, we'll, we'll always try and uh, keep it within that budget of the 220 to 260. Um, and that's for a five-bedroom HMO. So they're our most, um, I'd say our most popular most popular projects that investors go for. We tend to stick between the four, five and six bedrooms. Um, we have done larger HMOs, but we've found keeping within the four, five to six bedrooms, you of course avoid um, having to submit any planning permission. It's all been permitted development, but also because we find that when you keep a, a smaller HMO, um, it, it tends to run a bit nicer. When you start getting into the realms of larger HMOs, they start to become a bit like a hotel and you, you find a lot of tenant turnover. So we found four to six is the magic sweet spot for, for the HMOs in our areas. So just to cover off what we um, what we offer, like I mentioned before, it's, that's generally how the process starts. We find the property um, and then we'll, we can finance it where required. Um, we have an in-house development team 
and then we have an interior design team and a letting team as well. So along every step of the way, um, you'll have a dedicated set of professionals um, who will help you find it, finance it, develop it, design it, and let it at the end. And then providing if you want to refinance, you can jump back to Demi as well. And what we find is uh, what we found over the years, and as Bonnie mentioned, a lot of our growth is organic. Um, we, we we've grown we've grown this. Um, I would say our marketing, um, a lot of it is through word of mouth. We have a lot of repeat business, and that's how we've geared this towards is is the investors once they've done their first investment, and hopefully we've given them a good experience. They'll they'll come back to us back again in the sourcing and redo the whole process again. Um, and just a little flow chat as to how the process would work, depending on um, which strategy you would take. So if you were to go on down the left-hand side, that's usually how HMOs and uh, larger conversion projects would follow. Um, so you go through PJ building and development, and then you'd have interior design and then letting and then refinance. And then the, the right-hand side is um, mostly for um, buy-to-lets. So... Um, we do do um, interior design for some buy selects as well. Not common, but um, we 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 offer all our services across, regardless of what your um what your project is. Uh, what we're finding at the moment is we we do have a large amount of clientele um looking towards the buy select route, particularly from Scandinavia, um, and we've we've actually geared um geared one of the companies up towards specifically refurbishing buy selects. And these are some examples of uh, previous projects we've done. So HMOs, we've got here a, a six bed, a five bed and a four bed. These have all been completed um, this year. Next slide. And then these are some of our commercial conversions, which we've uh, sourcing and currently developing and have developed as well. So in the top left-hand corner there, we've got a project in Oldham. Um, about 10 minutes walk from Oldham Town Centre. It's going to comprise of uh, 23 apartments. And um, that's just midway through development. And then on the right-hand side, we've got 38 apartments um, that we're currently in the legal process. We've sold um, over half of them already. Uh, we still have some available. Um, and it's it's a it's a 10 minute drive from Leeds City Centre, and they're going to be made um, similar to the to the apartments that you see below. So that's an example of some apartments we've completed in Wakefield um, recently. And uh, that's our current offerings within uh, within PICNW. So anything from buy to lets, co living, uh, commercial to residentials, um, and we'd offer ready to go brand new developments as well. We also offer um more uh we also offer more options within the commercial to residential side as well so we offer a share option for our investors so what we're finding with some investors is if uh, maybe they don't want to invest in a project themselves they might be a bit nervous about investing within the UK or they might have 30,000 pounds which isn't quite enough to purchase a property within our areas but want to dip their toe into investment um, we offer share options whereby you would um, buy shares within a, an SPV, a limited company, which owns a commercial conversion and you would receive dividends and interests over the period of uh, three to five years. And for those interested, we have an investor booklet as well, which gives us a bit more of an in-depth breakdown as to uh, how we operate and um, where we operate. That's great. I've added your link to the chat, gentlemen. So any investors um, that are interested in that booklet, please feel free to reach out to the gentleman. Um, Calvin, I'm excited to see this deal one. I, we have got a we have got a question, but I think we'll um, see project one first and then I can ask the questions um, after. OK. So can everyone see this? Yeah. I can still see the presentation. All right. Oops. Perfect. Okay, brilliant. So the first deal we've got, um, as Bonnie mentioned, it's a turnkey. Um, both the projects we've got are turnkey. And um, the first one is this one, a four bed all on suite at HMO in Leeds. We actually got this um, hot off the press this week. 
Um, the investor um, is looking to sell. They're looking to move their funds closer to home um, and they're a motivated seller. Uh, we've managed this property actually for around about five to six years now. It was, um, it's always been a very consistent um, renter. Um, it's always rented out very well. It's situated in Bell Isle in Leeds. So it's next to the M621, which is the main motorway that is it like a ring road around Leeds. It'll take you over to Wakefield and take you over to um, Manchester. Um, and it will take you roughly 15, 10, 15 minutes to get into the heart of city, uh, Leeds City Centre. Um, it comes fully furnished. So within the kitchen, you've got everything you need, um, everything that the modern tenant would need. So you've got your washing machine there. You've got all your crockery, cutlery, white goods. Your mod cons it's got a little seating area as well and a flat screen tv um and then within the rooms themselves um they've they're all come fully furnished small double beds bedside cabinets and they all have en suites in them as well the reason why we think this project is um is, is it could be of uh more interest is although it's fully rented out at the moment uh it's achieving good rents we believe that you could push the rents up further like I mentioned before, it's been operational for around about five years, so it is a little bit tired. Um, structurally speaking, it's it's still very much um, intact. It's still, um, but the, the it could do with some decoration. It could do with some new carpets, maybe a bit of uplift on the on the furniture as well. And then, if you maybe spend uh, ten to fifteen thousand pounds, we believe you you could you could hit rents um, similar to. What you see in other parts of Leeds as well, so um, that would be bordering on the six hundred pounds per month per room in Leeds. Whereas I believe some of the rooms right now are renting for around about four five five. So the purchase price is one hundred seventy thousand pounds. That is open for negotiation. Um, like as I mentioned, the 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 vendor is is motivated. Um, it comes with a sourcing fee of four thousand pounds. The monthly rental price at the moment, it's currently rented. Um, sorry, the figure I mentioned before was professional tenants. The investor has has recently agreed to a commercial lease on this project. Um, so the commercial lease is with a company that offers guaranteed rent. Uh, it's a company we work, we work closely alongside with. Um, and it gives that it's given the investors the stability of um, knowing that income is going to come in every month. Um, now, the any prospective investors that want to purchase this property, they can have they've got two options. This lease does expire in October. They can choose to extend this lease further, um, or you can choose to rent out to um, individual professional tenants. Um, and yeah, but I think in terms of location, it's 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 it's. It is a very good, very good location where it where it sits within Leeds. Leeds is it leads as an area which consistently for the past five years has been probably in the top 10 uh, fastest growing cities within the UK for equity growth. Um it's a it's a it's a hub right now for it's the largest financial hub outside of London, I believe Leeds is. So what we're finding right now is the HMO demand in Leeds is is some of the strongest um we've seen. It's probably one of the strongest areas for rental uh, in general, hence why we've we've we look, we've looked at more commercial conversion projects over there, um, and the, the 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 tenants that are coming in uh, are generally st staying for um, much longer than other areas we've we've operated in as well. That's um, that's actually good to know that there's such a great rental demand. Um, before we go any further, Kelvin, I have a question in the chat box, which I'm going to ask first, even though it came in second. Um, but can you explain what turnkey means for those who um, maybe aren't sure? Turnkey means um, you get income from day one as soon as you've um, bought the project. So requires no renovation. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So it's basically um, it's cash flow. Cash uh, flow ready. Yeah. Ready. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yes. Title of this show. Uh, amazing. <laughs> so um I'm wondering whether to bring Bruce in right now with um with regards to the HMO then, Bruce. Do you have anything that you can add with this? I know that you usually prep your slides. I've got some slides if you want me to share. That would be amazing. All right, I'll share away. I'll share away. Right. So uh share. 
All right, so can everyone see that? Yes, excellent. Right, so, um, hi, I'm Bruce Manoing from Bond Finance. Um, just doing a quick introduction about Bond, then I'm going to uh, deal one. Then I'm going to stop there until Pete comes back in with deal two. And then I may jump back in and just give a few funding options for deal two. Um, so who is Bond? Well, I started Bond back in 2004 with my business partner, Dan Newbury. We're FCA regulated and founding members of the NACFB. If your, if your broker doesn't have these two accreditations, get a different broker. We've basically got two departments. We've got a residential and bipolar department, and we've got a commercial department. Commercial department does everything. Commercial, semi-commercial, refurb, HMO. We do lots of foreign nationals mainly out of Singapore and Hong Kong. That's why I'm currently in Brisbane. Um, so, the, so the time zones are easier. Um, so that's us in a nutshell. And that's our merry group of uh, uh, brokers. Uh, there's about 13 of us based next door to the Bank of England. Um, and deal one. So my analysis of deal, of deal one is purchase price 170, rent 23. That's a 13.4% uh, yield which is fantastic. That's a really strong yield. Now, as Kelvin mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of minimos. Um, so four bed, five bed HMOs, because you generally have less voids and lower maintenance costs, low, lower wear and tear. Um, with this case, um, we cannot use Connells as the valuer because they'll give it a nil value because it's over, they class it as an over adapted HMOs. So we can't use uh, Kent Reliance or Precise if we've got a UK national buying this, uh, because basically because there's all on suites. But there's plenty of other lenders out there in the market. Um, me personally, I would want to know, uh, do we need to go for a bricks and mortar valuation or do I need an investment led valuation, a long form valuation? Um, because that will dictate which lender I will go with. Uh, if it's bricks and mortar, uh, Fleet, they're, they're one of the top three bricks and mortar HMO lenders in the marketplace. You've got two year rates at five, five and a half. You've got five year rates with no fee at six and a half. Big fan of no fee products because the capital comes out of your back pocket. The interest is paid by the uh, tenants. So I generally get, the, my, with all my stuff, I get the tenants to pay the higher interest and I pay the, the lower fee. If we need an investment-led valuation, a long-form valuation, perhaps instructed by VAS, I would then, to get that valuation we need at 170, I would then probably go with Foundation Home Loans. They just bought out new investor-led valuations um they got uh um uh rates of sort of mid sixes with two percent fee and they'll also lend to a first time landlord on an investment yield base that's one of the reasons why i stuck that up so a first they've got, they've got can't be a first time buyer first time landlord okay so don't look too surprised bonnie okay but yeah um so first time buyer okay um, sorry, first, first, first time landlord on an investment yield basis. Um, if we are uh, selling this to a ten, uh, person overseas, um, anywhere in the world, apart from like Nigeria and Russia, you know, um, people living there, HTB will lend. Um, they've got rates starting with a seven. So basically, the more trickier the case, the higher rate you're going to pay. pay. We can get a yield-based valuation with, uh, no, we can't. VAS won't instruct a yield base. It will be bricks and mortar with HTB. Um, but yeah, we can cater for um, all people, all uh, countries. And that's me done for part one. I, I have a question though, Bruce, if um, yeah. because obviously I was pleasantly surprised when you said first time landlord buyer for the HMO because obviously historically um in order to be a landlord of a HMO you had to have already been able to prove you have a proven track record with regards to being yeah. a landlord of simple buy to let so with that product does that mean that you you can have your first project your first landlord duties 
as a HMO yeah. owner? Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you own your own house. Um, now, my go-to lender in the past has always been Kent Reliance, but Kent Reliance use Connells and they won't lend on that property. So if you're a first-time landlord, I, I would normally go to Vida, who will lend to first-time landlords, um, but they will only give a bricks and mortar valuation. While Foundation will lend to a first-time landlord and give an investment-led valuation so it's no there's, there's, so we just need to know where we where we're at with the valuation methodology required okay and then that dictates which lender we use okay amazing and is that something that the investor decides on what they want or is that something that is determined um at purchase at purchase point by um, the seller? It, it really, it, it's, it's a tricky one. I'll probably refer this back to our in-house experts, uh, Kelvin. Um, so, so I mean, in the surrounding area, are other houses roughly about 170? If not, we go investment yield. If they are, we go bricks and mortar. So, Amazing. Kelvin, Am over to you. Kelvin? Yeah, I mean, they are, they are all generally round about the the same price in all the areas that we're, we're operational in. All right, fine. So then yeah. we're, 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 we're bricks and mortaring on the way up and yeah. getting a nice, getting the, the best weight. Nice, nice and simple. I didn't yeah. know the answer, so I gave two options. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. So, gentlemen, before I forget, this is to um, PICNW. Um, I have a question from Vasca, which he um, popped into the chat earlier. He's asked, how does property investment complete Northwest keep up with the continuously changing and increasing regulations faced by landlords and ensure that properties and landlords are compliant? So within the letting team, um, obviously, with what's happened this year with a new government coming in, um, I think everyone's of the same opinion that we we, we need to keep up today and we're with with what's going to happen i think there's been a lot of talk about no no um no fault evictions um epcs the requirement of a c has been back and forth as well not just with the current government with, with the previous one as well so what we're doing is we're, we're future proofing a lot of our properties so for example if uh, epc of a c is required um we'll make sure that an epc will be obtained on all our developments um in some instances, you could say we're maybe going overkill with the minimos um, that Bruce mentioned. So the four beds, we're putting fire doors on them because who knows, maybe down the line. Particularly right now, there's been a lot of emphasis on the fire regulations and fire safety. So we're ensuring that even though it's not a legal requirement, we're making sure all our smaller HMOs um, have fire doors, they have intermessent strips, they meet into the same regulations as a licensed HMO. Um, I think... From a, a letting perspective, there is obviously so much you can do. You you have to kind of wait with bated breath, but um, we are ensuring that obviously all current regulations are met and we are trying to be more um, overcompensating where we can um, on certain regulations. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think that this government may bring in more additional licensing or push councils for additional licensing. Like they are, uh, like in Lambeth and Wandsworth, you need additional licensing on three or four beds HMOs. Uh, mandatory licensing is five plus. Mm. So uh, my prediction is that they're going to start hitting, pushing the councils to do more additional licensing. So just to add as well to Kelvin's, we, we, we're part of a um, a membership of a company called um, Safe Agent. And safe agents, obviously, it's called safe agent for a reason. It protects us and it keeps us up to date with all the legislation and data of when it's coming into place. So we are a member of safe agent as well, which, which helps protect us and the landlord. And as far as the regulations are concerned, um, you'll find service accommodation is one that's been attacked quite aggressively at the moment. So your Airbnbs and, and, and things like that, we're finding that the local councils are putting a lot more regulations in on uh, the Airbnb side of it. So that's something just to be conscious of if you want to do Airbnbs, the local authorities are picking this up. That's really yeah. great. Uh, Thank you so much. And, and, Sorry. and some areas uh, so, so, some areas are pushing for uh, C1 planning as well, if you want to do Airbnb. 
Yeah. It's just, um, you know, it's the uh, the regulations and staying on top of that and making sure that we're aware of what new policies and procedures and regulations are coming in so that we can, uh, even if we can't stay one step ahead, but we can plan forward for those things that are coming in and structuring our portfolios in accordance with that so that we stay. Safe agent who we're a member of, they sit in a lot of government uh, housing committees. So they're aware of legislation coming into place before it actually goes into parliament. And then we're made aware of these changes that potentially will be coming down the line in 12, 18, 24 months so we can prepare ourselves for it. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that, Peter. So that's safe agent. Thank you. Thank you. OK, fantastic. I think, gentlemen, I'm conscious of time. So if we can go on to your second deal, I'm very excited. We do have some questions, but they can be emailed into the um, the admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk because they're not really actually about these deals. So um, let's look at deal two, please. OK. OK, can we all see that? Yeah, all good. Thank you. OK, so the second deal, um, similar to the first one in terms of cash flow, it's cash flow ready. So this is a turnkey. Um, it's located in a town called Scunthorpe. So it's by the seaside. It's uh, east of where I'm sat at the moment in Wakefield, um, roughly about a 45 minute drive. Um, so this was developed we didn't develop the whole thing um but we we got planning permission for the basement apartments and um, they're all fully rented out and it was developed just before christmas so these investors um have all come together and they've developed um what's called a spv a specific purpose vehicle and they've created um, a limited company specifically for this project and um, they've come together and they just wanted to get some experience within the UK um, to, to invest, uh, to source um, and develop and uh, rent out a project. Um, and the motivation behind the sale is they're all looking to move their own separate ways. So they have agreed to sell the uh, the limited company, which is a bonus for any investors. Um, it obviously provides you with a, um, a, a stamp duty uh, exemption if you, if you purchase the limited company. The SPV only obviously only has this um, one asset within it, um, and we developed this, um, and it's 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 been it's been geared towards the professional market. So at the moment, um, we don't manage this. Um, we've just um, we've it's managed by a local company, who um, who manage it at nine percent, and they all comprise of one bed apartments. Um, the reason why we found this project to be quite um, it was it was a good start project for this um, for this investor uh, for these investors and for any investors looking to buy this is where it's situated within Scunthorpe. So um, the linear apartments, which you saw on the first slide here, um, it's got its own um, off street parking, and also down the road there's quite a large training hospital. So a large part of the uh, the demographic of the tenants who are in here are um, overseas nurses. Who, so they come over here uh, maybe for six months uh, to a year to three years. They'll come over here for a contract um, with the NHS. They'll do their training with the NHS and live here. And then um, they'll move on to maybe another hospital. So there is a very good um, continuous churn of these nurses coming over um, and living within this uh, within these uh, block of apartments. Uh, within Scunthorpe itself, there is other offerings, of course. There's, 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 um, it's, it has an infrastructure in itself. With it being nearby to the to the sea, um, logistics is a big, a big, um, a big company out there. So what you're finding is the likes of DHL. You've got Yamazons. They're all based over in Scunthorpe, um, and then you've got a lot of these high street um, towns as well. So the high street, um, the main high street within Scunthorpe is within walking distance. So within a ten minute walk. So a lot of people who work in and around the Scunthorpe area um, live within this within this building. So when we first came in, when we first came across this deal, and we went in the upstairs uh, apartments, um, a lot of these uh, tenants have actually lived there for um, about twenty years. In some instances, they've lived there for a long time. And uh, the the tenants of the apartments that we've developed, they've signed uh, minimum one year agreements. Um, and we envisage them to be there for, for longer based on um, the tenants upstairs. So as we mentioned, it's all, it's all brand new, um, fully fitted new kitchens. Um, 
brand new um brand new um brand new appliances. Um, now there is an opportunity for any investors similar to the last one. Um, they are a motivated seller. They are looking to um, they are open to negotiations. Soft market solely for us. We've been given uh, exclusivity on this deal. Um, so this deal is 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 seven apartments, all one bedrooms. Um, the monthly rental is four thousand three hundred seventy pounds a month. And um, they have paid up. The, there is a service charge on these apartments. Now they are paid up to uh, for the re remainder of twenty twenty four. So um, if you if you buy this now, there's no service charge for for the remainder of this year. Um, and we believe the reason why this 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 property is 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 good for it's good for the investors who are looking for a larger project but want something that's relatively easy to manage. So what we're finding a lot with these type of apartments is um, they appeal particularly to the professional single market or the couples market. Um, and these type of apartments, they, 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 they run themselves, essentially. Whereas in the HMOs, um, they are higher cash flow. Um, there, are, there is a bit more involvement from the investor. These apartments here, they're, they're, they're easy to manage by maybe a few maintenance, um, maintenance uh, throughout the year. But... You'll find long-standing tenants, um, all professional working, all been reference checked. They've all got relevant deposits taken as well, um, and the tenants in there, they're, I think they're, they're ecstatic with it. They, they they really like the the apartment and its location. So I think this is definitely one to to consider. Uh, and as I said, the the purchase prices that we're we're we're, we're listing them as, then they're, they're not um, set in stone. So there is a bit of wiggle room there as well. Uh, and we've got the full address there in linear apartments. Brilliant. Thank you. So sorry about that, Kelvin. Um, I just have a question, if you don't mind. With regards to these apartments, obviously they're being sold as an SPV, but is there an opportunity to um, title split this into uh, separate apartments, sell them on separately if an investor wanted to? There is, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And do you know potentially what the value of each apartment would be, just out of curiosity? Um, so the averaging round about between uh, 85 to 90, but for the largest apartment, we did get a local uh, valuation from the estate agent and that value at 100. Okay, amazing. So the, 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 the discrepancy between the rooms, uh, the apartment sizes, the, there's maybe uh, 10 meters, 10 square meters difference between the smallest and the largest apartment. Oh, so, so this is still quite large. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. Are they all above 30 square meters? They are, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. So, you're, you're going to have no problems hiding it one, one or two off if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. So, they're, all, they're all mortgageable. All mortgageable, yeah. Yeah. yeah so, okay. Amazing. Um, Out of curiosity, I have a question from Vic who's posted a um, question in the chat box. He said, the net yield is 5.5%. How is it high cash flowing, he asked? Um, well, it's it's the, the, net, the net yield that we've we've calculated on is based on the service charge and the uh, the current um, the current price that they've set. Obviously the investors, they have set a bit of a premium on this, on this project. Um, However, things have transpired recently where they are looking to obviously um, to to reduce that purchase price going forward. So it's it's high cash flowing in the sense that we feel the rents as well. Um, the local letting agent I've said them at quite conservative rents. When we compare them to upstairs, they're maybe uh, achieving fifty fifty pounds a month more. Admittedly, these are basement apartments. However, these are brand new, whereas upstairs, the apartments upstairs have been um, going for maybe about 15 years with little cosmetic uplift. Mm. So we believe um, a conversation with your local let letting agent um, who's managing it, there is an opportunity to, uh, to put the rents up further. And we've also compared them with the local market within Scunthorpe as well. And we feel like these properties have been rented a lot lower than what it could achieve within the Scunthorpe market. Brilliant. Remember, Kelvin said this. There's a deal to be done here. There's obviously an asking price, but we've got motivated sellers. So it's 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 from an investor's perspective, you would potentially get a good deal here, so that exactly. yield would go up. Yeah, 
Exactly. And I was just about to say that. So thank you for um for reiterating that, Peter. And also, um and, and I think Bruce is going to touch on this um very briefly, is that because it's an SPV, there won't be any tax duty. I'm not really sure how much um SLDT will be saved, but there will be that upfront saving as well. Um so that will be all baked into that. You'd save thing. about thirty five thousand pound, I would say, in the region of because it's five percent overseas investors, seven hundred thousand, thirty five thousand. Amazing. So, yeah. Depends what you buy it for, but there would definitely be a you know quite a chunky saving there. It it will be it's not a couple of thousand, is it? <laughs> It's a nice chunk. It's a nice chunk. Um, okay, brilliant. So I hope that answers your question there, Vic. We do, before we come to Bruce, we have one question here from Vasca. Um, he said, so the largest is worth 100,000. And yes, yeah, so Vasca, so basically the what, what Peter has just said is that the price is negotiable. Um, he's asked, is that because of the service charge being paid for 2024 that it's 700,000? It will be, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, brilliant. Perfect. Okay, Bruce, over to you. I'm excited <laughs> to see what you well, this, have this, this slide is really quick. Um so uh right, so yeah, seven hundred rent uh fifty two. I make uh gross yield seven seven and a half, net yield five point six. I like mobs, multi unit buildings, because you get different streams of income and if you do get one void it won't it won't really affect you that much until you re, re let it you also touched on the point already i noticed it as well you're buying a limited company so there's no stamp that there's no no stamp duty now if you're going to buy it by the limited company you can't use your standard lenders so if you go to kent reliance they'll just laugh at you they you you would you, they just want a separate SPV buying the property, so there's no legacy issues. Now this is a a new SPV ish which has bought bought it and developed it, so I don't think there was going to be any legacy issues. Um, but we would have to use a commercial lender to do that, and the lender of choice again back to HTB. Um, they'll lend to UK and overseas nationals. And guess what, Bonnie? You're going to like this again. They could be a first-time landlord as well. Um, um, but minimum income is £75,000. If you've got a minimum income of £75,000, HTB will allow you to buy this block. Bit crazy for a first-time um, landlord. I always suggest you go a little bit smaller than buy seven in one go. But yeah, they've got two year rates, um, seven, seven and a half, um, five year rates at seven percent. Um, so yeah, that's that's my lender of that's my you that's my lender of choice, uh, which will lend basically everybody in the market to, and to buy this limited company. Um, and that's my presentation done, uh, Bonnie. Um, no more slides for me. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Bruce. But and I and I agree that it may be, um, you know, maybe a a uh, big bite to have seven apartments as your first um first project. Um, but gentlemen, if we can just go back to your slide, I think it it might it be might be nice to just relook at that block and see that if I was or if anyone was to purchase seven units in one go, then it's more more convenient and easier to maybe handle and then having seven different units dotted about um in different locations across the UK um and actually easier to handle them in all all in one block with a managing company. Is that something that you can help the purchasing investor with? Do you have people that um manage properties as well that you can um put them in touch with? We do, yeah. And 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 the only reason why we 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 don't manage this particular property and we've given it to someone we trust is 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 Scunthorpe is a little far from us, but we we do we manage all the properties in areas that we we obviously develop in and we're sourcing as well. And I think the key with these type of larger projects is you've got to look them obviously differently from a your standard buy to let and your your HMO is the rent is good. The rent is 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 brilliant having rental income, but and that but we feel it's secondary when you look at these type of projects. The key to these larger projects is your equity growth. Hence why we've started looking at um more commercial conversions and why that's more 
becoming our main offering is because if you if you compare a standard apartment let's take the one in Leeds for example that I I, I mentioned earlier um you buy an apartment there and it's 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 15 minutes away from um or 30 minutes away from Leeds city center and you're buying that for 200,000 pounds but we know in Leeds for example they're selling for half a million for an equivalent spec apartment a two bed duplex you know if you're going to sit on that for maybe three to five years and you, re you refinance, you're going to make a lot more money in that apartment because of its location as opposed to, a, I say, a vanilla standard buy-to-let. Hence why we started looking more at apartments because you're, you're able to buy in more central locations. Um, a lot more people are looking to downsize as well, particularly with the way we're living at the moment. I think people, mine and Jordan's age, are living more of a transient lifestyle. We like to go traveling everywhere. We like to stay in big cities for maybe one or two years. So the rental demand for apartments has gone up. And I think last year on Zoopla, it was it was the most searched um, inquiry in the UK was two-bed apartments. Uh, hence our, our slight divergence to to these type of developments. We still do a lot of HMOs. We still do do a lot of buy-to-lets, but we've, we've sort of moved with the market as well because um, we've just seen the rental demand go through the roof for apartments right now. So... Okay, I think the thing to, to remember as well, to buy the £700,000, and that's assuming you'd pay that much for it, which you probably wouldn't, with the lending process you've got on it, you'd probably need about 200000 if you think of fees and things like that, like legal fees. You wouldn't need more than 200000 because you'd be able to lend the difference. So that that's... And then you've got the equity growth that Kelvin's talking about over the next three to five years. So that's where you're going to make your money on these types of developments. That's really good to know. You actually um, dovetail into a question that I was going to ask is, you know, if a if an investor comes to you, what would you what would the best steps be before they even uh, maybe they've seen this presentation or maybe they're just a brand new investor into into the industry and need those steps? What would what is the best like steps one, two, three to do before they actually come to yourselves? I think the thing to think about from an investor's perspective is um, what are they wanting? Are they wanting instant cash flow? Are they wanting to build a portfolio and, and do refurbishments to add value? Um, so they've got to decide on what strategy they're taking. And obviously what sits at the side of that is the finance. How much have you got determines which avenue you can take sometimes. So we do like a, a full review with investors and we go through the options that they've got. Um, and giving them sort of three or four different options and then ask them to go away and think about which avenue they want to take. And obviously, it can speak to Bruce about what lending they'll be able to get with their criteria because, you know, it depends on their financial situation as well. And then you can build up then, we can take you whichever sort of avenue you want to go down. That's why we have four or five different routes to take for investors because everybody's different and everybody's got you know, different ideas of what they want to achieve. But sometimes financially it's not possible. So sometimes you have to start a little bit smaller. But we do have investors that have come on board and they've got cash straight away and they've gone down the commercial to residential and looking at getting 20% returns after development. So it's part of the audit that we do with the investor to understand what their needs are and what they're wanting and what their budget is. Amazing. I love that. And so you'll guide them through that. And then you actually mentioned about Bruce. Bruce, I mean, with, with them coming to you for the lending, what would be, what what are the things that they would need to be conscious of for, or, or to, be, to have information ready, certain information ready for you to be able to access the right product for them in order to purchase, you know, the deal that they're looking to, to buy? Okay. Well, if it's UK nationals, it's quite simple. Okay. But with the overseas clients, it's always good to have an asset and liability and their property portfolio to hand. So once they've identified the property, I can just refer back to that in their file. And instantaneously, I know which lender I'm going with, because there's lots of little nuances with overseas nationals. It's a lot easier with UK nationals because, yeah, the choices are a lot greater. Okay, so, but apologies with with that though say as an example i was overseas I'm, I'm an overseas national would i have to what, what what would i be able to invest in the uk into if i only rented overseas 
is there is there anything that's available? It's for overseas nationals. Um, lenders are looking for three things. They're looking for good income, generally over over fifty thousand, some sort of landlord experience in the UK, and some sort of credit profile in the UK. Now, generally, eight out of ten of my foreign nationals are first time buyers in the UK. There's still lenders out there which will lend to first time buyers, but you can't get seventy five percent in your first deal. You're generally at down at 65 to 70 percent loan to value. Then on your second one, once you've earned your credit stripes, earned your landlord experience, you can then get 75 percent loan to value. So um, it doesn't really matter if they don't uh, own something overseas. It's more about their income uh, with overseas nationals. Can they can their income support any rental voids? That's what the underwriter is really looking at because because of distance, they just want to make sure they've got a little bit more money behind them than a normal person in the UK. Okay, brilliant. I think I think it's good to know. I think it's good for investors to know those key little nuggets of the steps they need to take before they approach, whether it be a lender or an agent who will be sourcing for them or, or has already got something that they're looking to buy um, because it just streamlines the process from a time perspective um, yep. And then I've got a last question to the gentleman at PICNW. What actually makes the process smoother for yourselves? I think just um, <clears throat> a cons consistent communication between not just from our end, but from the investors as well. I think uh, one thing we preach a lot with, with investors and a, a lot of our clientele is overseas. I would say 95% of them are either from um, the Netherlands, Sweden or the Far East um so we're aware obviously the 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 nervousness beh behind investing within a first time uh within a foreign country as a first time buyer and um we will never push you into a deal so we'll never say you need to take this deal for the sake of a sourcing fee because we as i mentioned before we believe that we we won't repeat business we want to continue working with these investors and because we have it always at our doorstep we have the developments we have the letting if we sell you a property that doesn't work it's and it goes to development it goes to letting we're not just going to get it from yourselves we're going to get it from the other teams within the business as well they're going to say well why have you told them 850 pounds per month when it's only 750 so myself and jordan have to make sure we get it right every step of the way and if you don't feel right about it give us a call and let us know and it's just about communication and um, we'll, we're there to obviously help guide you into the right investment that you want for your first time purchase. That's fantastic. Do you know, gentlemen, I really want to thank all of you for your time and energy and commitment um, for today's show. I really do appreciate you. If, um, if anybody has any questions, I haven't had any further questions in the chat box. So I think that means you've done a very thorough presentation, both, both, uh, both businesses. So I do really appreciate you. Um, greatly if anybody does have any questions um, obviously we're coming to the end of the show feel free to send those into admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk and also if you're watching the show on the replay on our youtube channel which will be there in about a week's time but for now i want to thank you all so thank you bruce thank you calvin thank you jordan and thank you peter for tuning in while you're away on holiday um, for this show um, the links have been dropped in. If you haven't managed to copy those, feel free again to get in touch with us at admin at sourcinginvestments.co.uk and we'll happily send you the links to the gentlemen's pages also. So with that, um, I want to thank all of our live investors um, and attendees. So Adrian, Bruce, Jeffrey, Glenn, Jackie, James, Chris, Lisa, Mary, Nicole, P Peter, Shane, Basket and Vic. Thank you for your time as well. And I look forward to seeing you on the next show. Thank you so much and bye for now.